is a staple of the role-playing game genre, but isn't exactly uncommon in others. It's the action of repeating a task to achieve a piece of loot, a skill, a perk, an achievement, a skin, and most commonly, a level. It's grinding, a controversial element of gameplay that may seem contrary to assumed good game design. But it's often embraced by many players, perhaps as much as those who hate it. Yet, even with the hate, there are a number of players who will grind to reach the goal they're after, as strange as it may sound. We're going to discuss the pros and cons of grinding, why many players may choose to grind, why grinding exists, and how companies may use the concept of grinding to develop their games. But before we get into that, a word from my sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends, one of the top free RPGs on Google Play Store with 4.4 stars, over 1.5 million reviews, and 10 million downloads. Raid also boasts 600 champions and each one from a unique faction with their own history. I found myself growing a little attached to some of my early game champions and using them every time. An example would be the starting champion, Galek, an orc with the ability to cast out a strong AoE attack, Hellraiser, that hits every enemy with one reliable blast. You can see what the fuss is all about and discover your favorite champion using my link down below. Raid just released its most powerful boss yet, the Hydra, with six different dangerous heads, such as the Head of Wrath. True to its name, it gets angry and unleashes the Vengeance buff. When it gets hit 15 times, the buff triples its attack power till the end of its next turn, and it hits for massive damage. Use champions that hit hard, but only hit once. There's also the Head of Torment, it's a bit different. It specializes in true fear, making you skip turns and lose access to your skills. Bring a champion with Veil or Perfect Veil skills to hide from it if you want the skipping to stop. And if you want more, Raid is giving out a free champion in the form of esports legend and Navi superstar, Simple. Between now and January 28, 2022, Simple's limited edition champion is available for free to both new and old players and raid. All you have to do is log in seven days between now and January 28th, and he's yours. If you miss out, he's gone forever. Also, being the holiday season, raid's got a full schedule of festive activities, special events, tournaments, and even new fusion events to help you grab some festive champions. Hit the link in the description or scan my QR code, and you'll get epic champion verges, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get into the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, and it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and begin your journey. You know, it's no surprise that the RPG genre is so linked to grinding when, as far as video games go, it was the RPGs that brought the concept to the masses. The biggest influence upon the genre is undoubtedly Dungeons & Dragons, the classic pen and paper experience that has been translated into video games time and again, and grinding has been an important factor in that experience. One early example comes from a literal translation. 1975's D&D, a game developed by two Southern Illinois University students for the Plato system. The game is credited by some as being the first video game to have the grind implemented. If not the first, it's definitely one of them. But D&D was credited for a number of other innovations as well, such as non-linear progressions and bosses. Very impressive for a game program by a couple of college students. Of course, as time progressed, more and more games began to adopt the style of repetition to achieve an end goal, many of which took inspiration from Dungeons & Dragons, the tabletop game, such as the Ultima series and Wizardry, where waves of enemies had to fall before your might so you may get to become more powerful and handle even more dangerous foes. But Dungeons & Dragons sessions really don't have grinding as we know it, at least most don't. But even in the original Dungeons & Dragons rule sets, there were levels and large pools of experience necessary to push the bar. Be you a magic user or a fighting man? And why is that? Why does Fallout require you to slay dozens of raiders to advance a level? Why your Dungeons & Dragons sessions may not exactly find this needed? Perhaps it's the human factor. After all, who wants to be the dungeon master that requires you to slaughter a bunch of goblins for hours on end? You can negotiate with your DM. But the rules of a game? Well, you're not going to get much of a response asking your computer to skip a segment. There's settings, of course, modifications, but no humanity to speak of. Still, grinding as a concept can be rooted to Dungeons & Dragons, though not particularly in the tabletop experience. Games just took the system and modified it to fit their needs. Actions and enemies give a very specific amount of experience points, while in the tabletop game, well, as with anything in Dungeons & Dragons, you're at the mercy of the Dungeon Master. But as stated before, grinding may be considered an antithesis to good game design. 
it's repeating the same process over and over, which should simply encourage exhaustion and boredom, yet it's accepted by many, even those who dislike it as a concept may do it. So why? Why are games designed with grinding being such an essential feature? There's four reasons I can see, and all of them are related in some form, even overlapping with each other. Number one, playtime. Number two, frustration. Number three, accomplishment. And number four, balance. In general, each idea does seek to space out the content, but each have various goals in mind. Playtime is about increasing the length of a game. Whether the designer feels that the quests are too short, the world is too small, or content too lacking, a padded playtime can alleviate that. Without such padded playtime, a player can easily blow through the game and see all the content it has to offer. But locking out said content, whether softly by having an area overran with high-ranking beasts, or hard by literally denying access until you reach a specific level or do a specific task, does make a game feel longer. You can invest hours slaying monsters to reach a specific level so you can take a perk and boost your character up just enough to finally take out the challenging boss. Or perhaps it's less focused on combat, long acts of resource gathering, so you can turn those resources into another set of resources and then into one more set of resources and finally craft out long sought weapon, which may wind up becoming outdated in a matter of hours by a single drop. Sometimes the grind is designed in a way to frustrate and annoy the player. Imagine all the times you barely lost a fight with a high ranking boss or just didn't have enough resources to build the weapon you were after. The experience required to get to the next level, a bit too high. The monsters in the zone, just a bit too strong. Some new armor that could completely overshadow what you're using, a bit too expensive. It's aggravating, upsetting, but you can see victory on the horizon. So you keep playing, keep charging after the goal. Of course, passing these challenges can be part of the fun. Designers can often make the rewards of overcoming a barrier that much more worth it. Destroying strong enemies, unlocking new skills, wielding powerful weapons, or wearing armor that laughs off attacks of once difficult monsters can make the grind all seem worth it. It was your blood, sweat, tears, and deaths that brought you to this point. All the trials that you faced, all the harshness that you overcame, and all the anger that was rooted from it, all of it was immortalized as a trophy in this fictional realm. You can stand tall and proud of what you have done, you earned it. A sense of pride and accomplishment, as it were. Still, difficulty of attaining these lovely pieces of gear in high numbers are part of an important consideration. You don't want these tasks to be too easy, otherwise that sweet satisfaction for accomplishing said task will be underwhelming to say the least. A piece of in-game gear must be difficult to obtain. Only through destroying a mighty boss or collecting the rarest raw materials in such a high quantity can it be crafted. Naturally, this is certainly a much larger consideration for the online world. How does one balance a game with longtime players and newer ones alike? It's perhaps impossible, but at least grinding out levels and gear does slow the progression some. When a new expansion is released, at least the older players won't necessarily have everything to get the fullest amount of content right away, though they're certainly at an advantage. So that brings us back to the question, why do we do it? We know the tricks that developers may put into the game. We know that content is locked out to pad the end results. So why do we continue to go along with it? It's no doubt that psychology plays such an integral part of video game design. Knowing what to encourage and when to encourage it. Everything is designed with the intent to get the player to amass long play times and gives just enough to keep the player invested when they spent countless hours in the game already. After all, they're a business and the longer you play, the more you'll want to throw money at the company to keep playing. Whether it's through expansions, microtransactions, or subscription models. Every level up, every new piece of loot, and every large collection of experience points releases everyone's favorite neurotransmitter, dopamine. And who doesn't love to bathe their brain in some happy juice? We're a species that loves to seek out pleasures. It's why we eat certain foods, why we watch specific shows, and yes, why we play hours on end to watch a little green bar finally complete and blanket our characters with new statistical greatness. There's no doubt that game designers have long learned this trend. They know when to give that sweet rush and keep you playing. Even if you complain as you're wiping out a forest to near extinction, the truth is for many players that one more level up is worth the extended playtime. Of course, that's not all there is. There are many players who want bragging rights that come with achieving such a hard goal and getting rare items. Skins or attire with glowing effects, limited time weapons, or being on a leaderboard as one of the greats. The latter of which goes back to the days of rooms filled with arcade machines and people showcasing their credible ability to spell out alternative names for their backside. Even still, especially when it comes to multiplayer, 
Grinding out levels just means that there's more content to discover, new worlds to be visited, and new gear to be had. There's always something to look forward to. Some are more than happy to do menial tasks, because the anticipation of a grand adventure is quite appealing. Consider all the times you daydreamed about doing something, and how it often excited you, even if you never actually accomplished that goal, or it turned out to be underwhelming. For a lot, the grind it can be just that, the exciting preparation phase. And naturally, there's people out there who just enjoy the grind, a gameplay loop that often allows the player to feel satisfied repeating the same process. Much like people who enjoy washing dishes or cleaning up the trash, the process is part of the enjoyment, and while many might complain about grinding, there are those who are simply fans of it. So is grinding good or bad? As with most things, the answer is up for interpretation. While I may talk about how companies can use grinding in a way that increases playtime and play with your mind to encourage longer sessions, I don't mean it as a grim or dystopian as it may come off sounding. Players aren't really fooled by gaming companies these days, and a large swath of them even enjoy what's being done. Despite some controversial actions a game might take, if a game has a high player count, then they're definitely doing something that many people enjoy. Grinding is included. As a principle, grinding is perhaps one of those things that is arguably best done in moderation. Enough to make a player feel like a challenge is presented, a goal was achieved, but not enough to really kick off the player from the desire to play the game. Just enough padded playtime without it ever really being a nuisance. However, there's no real set formula for what that is. Best guesses and what feels right are perhaps the tools. While there's certainly years of data to pull from, trials and tests, the industry's grind, if you will, the market is always evolving and the audience is always changing. What works today won't necessarily work tomorrow. Though undoubtedly there's an educated method to follow, they know when to give impressions and encourage activity. That much is true. Psychology to follow. But keeping that audience engaged for a long haul, well, there's something of a true challenge.